He is very good. That's definitely going to favor Drew here. Uh, if you're playing against something like blue-white, mm -hmm. Caleb's deck would be better right. position. So, well, them playing very similar decks. Uh, I don't think that small of a difference is really going to like, necessarily show up, and, but it could. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have not yet seen the clean-shaven Caleb. I haven't seen him in a long time. That is, that is quite a difference. I'm used to him uh, with a beard. Caleb is a uh, pretty talented player. He top eighted two Grand Prix in a row. Two Grand Prix in a row, but because, of course, of the, of the change of how Grand Prix work, he is not qualified for Pro Tour uh, Avacyn Restored. I believe he also seconded the PTQ between those two Grand Prix. Yeah, so that's got to be a little frustrating. That does have to be frustrating. Hopefully he'll have some better luck today, and it won't qualify him for uh, Pro Tour Avacyn uh, Restored, but... Maybe uh, at the end of this tournament, he'll have a, a nice big check to take him. Maybe a novelty check. We all like novelty checks. Nobody loves a novelty check more than Chris Lockman. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Check? Yeah, I still have the, no the novelty check too, but his novelty check is he actually got a table for his living room that's glass on the top, <laughs> and the novelty check is inside of the table. So whenever you're there, like basically it's just like the centerpiece of everything. Right. And uh, he claims to snuggle with it on a regular basis. You could get it made into like a, a blanket or a pillow or something. You may have it like softened up. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like somehow. Screen printed onto like a, a towel. Yeah, and just you sleep could, like, dry yourself night. with it. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know about a towel. That's, that is some great tech. All right, so Caleb, it looks like, has uh, on the play first turn uh, Tropical Island. That's to be expected. And uh, looks like this, we're gonna have a mongoose or a yep mongoose over Delver on this one. Mongoose is probably the better creature overall in this matchup, being it largely impossible for either player to actually kill their opposing mongoose, barring their own mongoose or Tarmogoyf. And of course, Drew, uh, you know, in that battle is up on Tarmogoyf. That's a pretty cool trap. What is going? Oh, it must be an altered. Uh, Extended Art Trop. Extended Art Tropical Island. You just make something up like, oh, you got those if you uh, top eighted Turkish Nationals. <laughs> Turkish and, National 97? Yeah, 97. <laughs> match was huge in Turkey in 97. After that, though, it just died off. I don't know why. They gave up Tropical <laughs> Islands. What else do these people want? <laughs> Caleb, full of, uh, similarly full of uh, one cast and cost spells. It's, it's, one ponder, two brainstorm, and uh, the red card might be a bolt. It might be something else. Oh, he's gonna brainstorm. Not sure uh, if uh, AJ Soccer would approve of that brainstorm. I don't think he would. The, the old main phase brainstorm without the uh, opportunity to play a fetch. Uh, he has another brainstorm in his hand. He's also looking to fill his graveyard for the Nimble Mongoose. Yeah. Uh, he could have gone for the Ponder instead, but. Well, if he has, if he has, the, I guess he only has one Tomb Scar or Thought Scar. If he had another, if he has a Thought Scar here, that'd be very good. But uh, Ponder is. I'm surprised he did it in that order. Yeah. Oh, looks like he's choosing the Shuffle. That's why he did in that order. And that makes sense. Yeah. Both these players with wristbands on, which is part of the uh, uh, security this weekend. Yeah, that's a yeah. great thing. You know, there yeah. have been uh, the Grand Prix that just happened here in Baltimore. There were some problems with people losing cards and even collections. Yeah. And so and some better security today. Uh, you know, if you, if you come with a bag, you're going to get a wristband to make sure that you're leaving with that bag. So it's a nice system. I like that they implemented that. So again, Caleb shuffles and passes back. Volcanic into Delver. Can't really see what's in Drew's hand. It's like he had yeah, a spell I don't have a good glimpse yet. I, th I think he may he has a, at least a brainstorm. One of Caleb Stifles is in his hand, which is of course the card we just talked about as his uh, choice over spell snare. More main phase brainstorms.
Looks like he picked up a Wasteland as one of his cards. Is that a Predict? Does he play a Predict? He does have one Predict. Oh. Oh, nice. I sniped that one. <laughs> predict is quite uh, quite good with uh, Delver involved. Predict's just a pretty good card. Yeah, yeah. Man, when you hit off Predict, you feel so good. Uh, Wasteland is that... Taking out the Tropical. Up to five cards in Caleb's uh, graveyard, so he is two away from Threshold. Ooh, yeah, Drew uh, insta-blocks. Insta he does not want to see that Mongoose getting larger. A little surprise Caleb attack there. You know, I figured he would just give it a turn or two and... Uh, and, and let it grow all the way. Drew playing around Stifle there wisely. Yeah, with the uh, Kale's got to go for the predict this this turn while he knows. I, I, I imagine assume. he'd have to. I mean. The real worry for Caleb is that with that mongoose dead, he doesn't have any creatures at this point to do anything. And one thing that's nice too about this play by Caleb, like being able to predict in response to the uh, Thought Scour, is that mm -hmm. if Drew had sacrificed this Misty Rainforest in order to, say, spell snare that, right. then he would be able to daze the Scour. Yeah. And, and it just, and just Drew, gives him a lot of value. Looks like Drew sacks it in response to the. Uh, to Caleb searching. Oh, in response, Caleb Days is the uh, Thought Scar. Thought Scar. These are like those old legacy decks of, of, of yesteryear where they didn't really do anything except for uh, prevent things from happening to them and Days yeah. and Stifle. Caleb does need to search for a land, though. He, he should, he does. I, I think Drew's is still on the stack first. Yeah. Because he's second in response to Caleb doing it to get around Stifle. Mm -hmm. oh, yep, there goes Caleb. I imagine Tropical here. I would like his board a lot better with the Mongoose on it. I would I have too. To say, I still do not get that attack. Oh, and Wasteland takes out the Tropical. Uh, he, he might have to stifle this. And I have a feeling this this stifle is going to get... Oh, no, he just floats. Uh, he does have another shop in hand, so... Oh, okay, he does. So he's I'm not... actually surprised that Drew did to that, because he saw him daze the trap back to mm -hmm. his hand. Tarmogoyf. No, I think... I'm pretty sure Drew has a spell snare, so. He also has a spell pierce. Ooh, dazing it first. Pretty hard for Caleb to force will this back. Uh, yeah, that's a rough it. course. Yep, spell yeah. pierce. Yeah, yeah Caleb's now behind a lot of cards because, you know, with that force and being on the play yeah. here, I mean. He, he is, uh, the, the Predict helped him out a little bit, but he's just having such a hard time finding a threat. Wasteland takes out the Drew's Tropical once again. So, yeah, floating. Green Sun for one, which gets Bell Pierced. And uh, it looks like Caleb's down to two cards. Mm -hmm. And Drew has three. Plus his draw step, right? Right, plus his draw step. Now Caleb's two cards are Brainstorm and Lightning Bolt. Not see what Drew has. This is uh, an interesting scenario for both of these players. 
Yeah, I mean, they're, they're both just sort of... Uh... It's funny because normally when you watch the rug deck play, it's not a mirror. So it's this like super tempo oriented deck. And the mirror yeah. just nothing happens. <laughs> it's just harm guys that bounce off each other right. and like all the delvers die and Yeah, it's a, yeah, it, it just it just one of those games where it's both players' decks just don't do anything other than stop their opponent's decks and so when they play each other like they're sort of, you know, knocking uh, these like blunt objects against each other. But oh, is this gonna be a mongoose? I yes, think so, and that's probably going to stick. I imagine it will. He's just up by so many lands. I guess so many being two isn't a lot, but... This is this is going to be rough for Drew. He needs a Tarmogoyf on the table pretty soon. Yeah. And I like that main phase brainstorm. This is where you really need to pull the trigger. Yeah, he needs to do something this game. He's, no lands. Yeah. And now he's locked himself up with the brainstorm, too. Yep. This is a rough, rough, rough yeah. turn for Drew. I, and I think you're right. I think you do have to do it there because you just yeah. need to... You can't let yourself get knocked down too far. We, you know both players are just... Have their hands very full of bolts. There's just so many in this matchup and they're not particularly good. Um, and you get down to 10 and all of a sudden you're, you're well in uh, burn range. Should we know, though? Uh... Looks like um, Caleb has gone for uh, Fork Bolt over, uh, and Drew has gone for Chain Lightning. Interesting. Yeah, there are subtle differences in between each of their lists. Yeah. Doing, I do like to predict a lot. The, yeah, predict, predict, predict is, is really good against Counterbalance, too. It is. It's very good. It's good against so much stuff. I mean, the worst part about it against Counterbalance is that uh, if they have a top in play, you know, they, they get to choose whether or not you're going to name correctly to an extent. Unless you have the real read on them. Hard casting a force. If you're hard casting a force against one land, things are not going well for the other player. It's true. <laughs> and if Drew finishes drawing through these uh, these locked cards and checks the next three, there is two lands in the two next lands. three. So he's going to put some burn back on top, it looks like. Imagine he'll be sacking this to get a tropical. Problem is, is if he goes to, if he tries to use the yeah. fetch land, then Caleb has stifles. No, that's true. Yeah, the problem is that in his one land left is uh, as a volcanic. So, yep, stifle. I guess you could wait until next turn to do it. He's got a force. Oh, well, he can force back. Ooh. Yep, and. Uh, Sometimes you just gotta force a stifle. Sometimes. Drew Levin with a very nice tropical there. Wow. I think it's foreign blackboard though. I don't think it's beta. Is it? Yeah, it's foreign, okay. Still. Let's it's not nice. get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So the first second there I was Whoa. <laughs> That's only like a four hundred dollar tropical island, not a whatever. Multiple thousand, whatever it is. I recently sold a beta tundra, I was very happy about that. I imagine you would be. I didn't know it was worth that much money. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So, so this turn, Drew's turn is Tarmogoyf and Delver. I mean, yeah, out out of nowhere, that yeah. being able to, to trade, uh, Mongeese right there. It is now all of a sudden it's pretty rough for Caleb. Now we can kill the Delver, no problem. Oh, kills Tarmogoyf, no problem. Delver does not flip, but it gets in their Delver. You know, Caleb's actually pretty flooded this game. Yeah. Now, it doesn't seem like, you know, five lands on turn million is flooded, but when you're playing a deck that's like just playing a ton of fetch lands and no actual mana producing lands. Right. It, it's, it's pretty hard to draw that many. Caleb gets his own Delver. But Drew again doesn't flip. Do you, if you're Caleb, do you trade here? Um. I think your plan is to like for him to keep whiffing, and you're you want to hit before he does. Fair. Yeah. He also has Snapcaster, which is going to be uh, at this point um, drawing a Snapcaster would be just humongous. Yeah, I mean, if he can Snapcaster Fork Bolt, it's ooh, and it flips. No, he yep, he's going to stifle the second trigger keep from flipping that one.
But, you know, Drew's Ponder uh, gets a Force of Will, a, is that a Tarmogoyf? And a Delver. Wow. Yeah, that's... Yeah, he is just drawing the heat every single turn. And now again, pretty, wow, this is a back and forth game. This, this game is, is pretty, uh, pretty solid for a game where one player... For as, for as bad as it looked for Drew for so long, I mean, Caleb just couldn't do anything. You know, he the he allowed his um, his mongoose to trade really early, and then he just couldn't find a backup. And by the time he did, it wasn't enough to actually uh, kill Drew Levin. I think we're trying to figure out how big everything is. Yep, and he draws a mongoose. And he can Final attack way. with this, uh, this Delver, but I don't think he wants to trade Delver. I think he wants to somehow be off of Delver. Yeah, I mean, well, he knows Drew's going to have double Delver next turn, too. Yeah. Because, or double Insectile Aberration, because he just pondered. Yeah. And if you're playing Rug it's, it's, and you ponder, it's, it's pretty unlikely. If he does not reveal here, things are going, oh, of course. Ugh. Things are going pretty poorly if you don't reveal there. If you don't reveal there, like, why didn't you shuffle? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. What what has to be on top of there? Just goif, goif, goif? Yeah, then... <laughs> you probably... You, you couldn't even do it then, because you only have one tropical, and if he, you know, randomly plays a waste and it kills a trop, you're just like, uh, uh. Well, the next three trop is going to be very awkward for me. And they come. And, the, and Caleb just doesn't have a good block here, you know? I'm not sure how big those Tarmogoyfs are. I imagine four or fives. So, instant land creature sorcery. He takes it, he just goes to ten, right? Four or five. Um, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He goes to one. Or no, yeah, right, right ten. So, and I think, yeah, I think you just take it and hope the hope draw a burn spell. Yeah. He does, and uh, he doesn't. Yep. Does not draw a burn spell. The Drew Levin, first game in the Rug Delver Mirror. That was uh, that was a good game. That was a good game. That was very back and forth. Yeah. I think you're right though. It all came down to Caleb trading that Nimble Mongoose. Yeah. Early on. Early on, trading it for a Delver that he. I mean, very soon after that, you know, he had he has a lot of burn in his deck to deal with that Delver, and. Uh, you know, just couldn't. You know, he could have killed that pretty easily, and then just been sailing over after turn after turn, but does not always happen. Yeah. Now Drew has a life in the loneliness sideboard, which could be really huge here. That could be huge. Uh, he also has the much talked about sulfur all metal, which will not come out here. The big difference, and this this is a uh, uh, Caleb has gone with a different sideboarding plan. He's uh, got these. Um, Counterbalance top sideboard, which I think is pretty big in this mirror. Very big. Everything's a one or a two. Yeah. Everything. So I imagine he'll be boarding that in. Uh, and, and that's about all he really has. He can bring in some merges if he'd like, but I think they're only going to hit Drew's Tomerloy, so. And Delvers. Oh, it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's, it's only if he controls yeah. the forest, right? right? It's not. It's a, yeah, it doesn't it's have to be green. The forest. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually thought that, you know, Drew has four Submerge and Caleb only has three, which is pretty good. I think if Submerge is going to be turned on in a matchup mm -hmm. where you're both swinging at each other, it's just so brutal. It is. It's like, I mean, it's, you know, it's obviously free for mana, but it's also, you know, plus one card. Because they have to redraw it. And sometimes they don't want to redraw it. Sometimes you just get some, you know, creature that, like the Tarmogoy is not incredibly important right now because you're just battling a Delver of overhead and... You just, you know, yeah, draw it's clear that they can't deal with what you have. Yeah. You just submerge their guy and then... Keep drawing it. Keep drawing it. Draw it again. Right. Now, he also has Scavenging Ooze, which I think is probably pretty good in this mirror. I Gotta mean, be really good, right? Just just keeping, keeping your opponent... off threshold. Yeah. Things like that. Keeping him off threshold. Keeping, uh, you know, Caleb with the Snapcasters actually does have to rebuy stuff. Uh, plus, it, you know, it can get large fairly quickly. There's not a whole lot of creatures in either of these decks, so... Um, it's not gonna, you know, just get gigantic after two turns, but you know, if you can get out of bolt range, it, 
If you can get out of bolt range, you can get bigger than Tarmogoyf pretty easily. That's just the hard part because both players will have lightning bolts. Anything that you think needs to come out in this matchup? Um, it's weird. The the sideboarding heavily depends on how your opponent is sideboarding. That's true. So, and whether or not Drew knows that Caleb has gone with the uh, counterbalance plan, which is not an uncommon plan, but you have to know they're on it. The nice thing for Drew is that he has. He has some leeway. You know, he has one game yeah, where, you know, if he loses the counterbalance in game two, then he can be set up for it. All right, he can switch out his... Uh, he would be on the play and be ready for it. He can right. be on the play and still have his spell snares and his dazes. And... Yeah. Man. Do you leave the stifles in, or are the stifles what you take out for the counterbalance package? Because they don't seem... I mean, if you, yeah, if you hit their, their dual lands, hit their fetch lands, they seem awesome. But, I mean, when you have to stifle a, uh, um, a Delver trigger. It's pretty awkward. It's pretty awkward. Yeah. I'd rather not do it's that. Kind of worse than healing self. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Just slightly. <laughs> Just slightly. But I, I think those will probably come out. Um, I don't know. It's probably not going to get so uh, saucy to actually bring in Sulfuric Vortex, but... Sulfuric Vortex is kind of <laughs> sweet, though. It's very sweet. I'm excited to see what that's. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's going to deck with Batter Skull, but I'm excited to see that deck, uh, that card, see play. This, you know, it's it's pretty much only really seen play in cube over the last uh, few years. So I guess with the, the mono red decks been playing it, but that is not a fun card. If you're that on, is not if, a fun card. If at you're all. on the receiving end of it, at least if you're on the, the on the applying end of the Sphere Vortex, you are happy as can be. Yeah. Oh, what do you got? Eight Smile so City. What are you at, eight? Sulfuric Vortex. Good luck with this one. Yeah. Yeah, sitting in your high rise in Smile City, sending letters to your opponent who's just wallowing in Frown Town. Yeah. You know, you're just. Oh, guess what I found? <laughs> Another Sulfuric Vortex. <laughs> How do you like that one? I'm having fun up here. Oh, that's a Loxon on Fire? Cool. Nice card, bro. Nice card. Oh, Batter Skull. Huh? I had one of those once. I gave it up. Wasn't good enough. <laughs> Caleb is down to six. Mulliganing is really bad in this mirror. It is. I, I've played this deck a little bit. I I play blue-white when I play Legacy. I basically mm -hmm. have, since since Snapcaster got printed, I've played blue-white. Uh, Riptide is my favorite card of all time. So it's a good card. That probably explains why I'm playing blue-white religiously. But I have played the rug deck in between because people have told me it was better. And I, I don't think they're right anymore, but um, I've played a lot of the Rug Mirror as a result, and... It's pretty miserable. It's miserable. Mulliganing is horrid in this mirror. Yeah. Caleb yeah. is very good at Legacy, and he knows that. Yeah, he is somebody else who is uh, certainly best known for Legacy. Uh, now, now, if both decks had, like, Stifle... That's when I found that mulgaming was just the most, like the, the highest variance. Because sometimes you draw, like you, you draw your six and you draw stifles and they end up not doing anything. Or alternatively, you can mulligan and then have a, just a fetch land, crack a turn one and just get stifled. And just, it just adds this tremendous variance that's so hard to deal with. But we're not gonna necessarily, oh, Caleb is down to five? Ooh. Not looking good. Not looking like our game is going to be as exciting as game one. But no. you never know. Yeah. I mean, if he just goes uh, turn one top, turn two counterbalance. Yeah, that. And Drew doesn't have a response. Have yeah, you know, he could he could just win off the base of that. That's hard to do without Drew having a response. So Drew has four spell pierce, it's, spell snare, and... We're, we're living in yeah. magical Christmas land where... And power blasts. Where, where Drew has no cards of any relevance whatsoever. Yeah. And the top ten cards of his deck. Could just be lands. They could all be lands. And he, then Caleb doesn't even need the counterbalance tap. Nope. And he's gonna. Caleb will actually mill him out with a combination of uh, predict and his one thought scour. Yeah. That, on zero that's how this match is gonna go. My prediction. Opening up with a ponder, which <laughs> shows. Is that ponder ponder?
definitely a fetch. It's definitely a scalding turn. Isn't that the worst when you ponder on turn one and you look to see what you have in your hand and it's only three cards? <laughs> You're like, oh man. Yeah. I hate when I ponder into ponders because I'm always just like, uh. Because I know I want them, but it's probably not best to take them. So Caleb uh, gets his first land, his uh, Volcanic Island Wasteland, but he does have a Scalding Turn. Drew does the Stifle Check. The classic legacy move of putting her, your uh, fetch land in the graveyard and going, response? Caleb, by the way, not a response. This land is significantly more common in the beginning of the Legacy. Yes. Now, you know, Stifle is a card that people play from time to time, but... Back in the beginning of Legacy, it didn't matter what you were playing or what your opponent was playing. Every time you sacrificed a fetch land, you had to like right. wait, and then they would tank well, whether or not did, they had it. Every time you did anything, you're just like <laughs> stifle. It's kind of like when, when people uh, are real gun about counter tools. They're like counter, 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 counter. Every time you do anything, and you're like, I'll tell you what I'm countering it. <laughs> Everything is stifle. You're like stifle, stifle, stifle. Mother and stifle. Nope, I'll allow it to resolve. Okay. It's okay. Uh, so Caleb plays a brainstorm. First he days. He days the mongoose and plays the brainstorm. He uh, has two lands in his hand now. Oh, wastes Drew's uh, tropical. And Drew has another land yet still. So yeah, Caleb, considering he went down to five, not that bad off. But Drew is probably going to sack this, go to Tropical, and play a Mongoose, or... Let's say it's a Delvern's hand. Nope, he I think it's a Tarmogoyf. Oh, it's Tarmogoyf. Yeah. Hmm. Tarmogoyf's 4-5 already. Yeah, he is. Surprised he didn't play the Tarmogoyf. I think he just doesn't want to get tased out. That makes sense. I mean, if you have the extra land, you might as well just wait a turn. You're, you're so far ahead that you just can't play into any cards that let Caleb... Uh, yeah, on the Come draw with your opponent down two cards, it's just... Yeah. yeah. Alright. Caleb up two hands, and I think he has a boyfriend in his hand too. Yes, he does. <laughs> and another Wasteland takes out the Tropical. Blind Predict. Ooh, I hope he hits. Oh, it's so great when you hit the blind predict. Because if he hits, then not only did he hit, but he's kind of back in the game. He is. He is. He's up. He's up another card. Yeah. Still not great, but better than it is now. Yes, much better. So he's looking through the graveyards, I think, trying to get the best, the best chances. And what is the name? Well, we flipped the scavenging ooze. So we're pretty sure he didn't name that. It's no, <laughs> did not name scavenging ooze. But it's good that Drew did not draw the scavenging ooze there, I imagine. Yeah. Oh, correcting him that the tropical is in fact dead in the wasteland. And yet another brainstorm. We've seen several brainstorms this match. Lots of brainstorming happening. I feel like they spent more time looking at the top three cards of their deck than they have looking at the rest of their hand. <laughs> Tom and Wife, one only one up for Caleb. He can sack the fetch land. Uh, if he has well he just but if he had something, but he does not. Looks like he's gonna brainstorm, possibly looking for a force. Drew is just playing around these stifles. Very careful about it. Which is nice. Like, yeah. That's what you want to be doing here. He is he's pretty convinced it looks like the Caleb has a stifle. He's trying his best to play around it. Though he did open himself up to days right there. Shuffling to those decks. And uh, are we can 
through trying to confirm that Tarmogoyt does in fact resolve, and it does. Caleb is going to have to jam his own right here. Uh, Drew says it's okay. Now, I know Caleb has a bolt for, uh, for Drew's Tarmogoyf. Drew, Drew has one for, for Caleb's too, I think. For Caleb's. Champions in death. Friends forever. Though Drew does have a, Drew can, uh, pretty sure he has a way to stop Caleb's bolt. So they will not meet each other's death. No. Oh, he just takes it. Or maybe they did block. And they both get banned. Yeah. It's interesting. It looks like he has a spell pierce there, but I guess he just didn't uh, didn't want to use it on that. Really? For on a tarmogoyf? I would have, but I would have too. Maybe Tarmogoyf's not as good as we think it is in this match, but it seems very, very good. It seems really good to me. It does. More They're playing red cards. It's a Tarmogoyf. <laughs> More so than trying to, you know, protect your Delver, I guess, is the other thing you do. Unless he's so concerned about, you know, Caleb playing something that knocks him out of the game that... Uh, he, he must know about the counterbalance. Line. He must. He must. Because there's no way you make that play if you don't know about that. Yeah. That would make sense. That he's just... He was afraid that Caleb would just drop the counterbalance and be able to... Lock him out and ooh, and he drew a pyroblast for it. Handshake and Drew Levin goes up 2 0 and now 5 0 in the Star City Games Invitational Baltimore. Huh? Caleb now at 4 